And yes, we are back again. It is 1720 and it is time for more Overwatch. We have a, a bazinga of a match for you. It's Nudiki oh, yeah. versus X Oblivione. And this should prove to be a very good one. I mean, look at what these teams have been fighting on before. X Oblivione coming off of a win versus uh, NMY Thong and uh, Nuriki getting Banshee Esports to move on to the lower bracket. With me is the man of class, and he is going to tell me about these teams. Hello, mate. Well, Nuriki, they came in as the big surprise of the tournament. Uh, we initially assigned them the 16C. They're a very new roster, so these players are not new by any means. I mean, they, they're just, they've just been dominating so far. They just made a run through the upper bracket, and they don't, they don't seem to be wanting to stop anytime soon. So they really have their work cut out for them on the other side. And Ex Oblivione, I mean, it's, it, yes, they have pretty good players as themselves as well. They've the roster that's been together for a little bit longer already, so they definitely should be able to have a little bit more of that synergy going on. But that's not always the answer to every question. You know, synergy doesn't always cut it. Is also just the raw talent of certain individual players, and with the two to two lock, that's just come back into the, into the game a lot more. So it could be a very close match. But if Nudiki is as strong as they've been showing so far, this also could be over very quickly. Yeah, no, that's right. So uh, looking at those teams, looking at the players specifically, um, is there yeah. anyone we should uh, we should specifically watch out for? Any you know uh, backbone of these teams that we should be aware of? I always look out for the backbone of Nuriki. Their, their support duo is just off the charts. They just, just don't seem to let people die ever. Uh, and they get some damage in themselves. So that's always what you want from your supports. Uh, on the other side, though, I do really, really want to see what Doge and Renee can do on that tank combo versus Relax and Alexor. Because if we, if we, we're going to have a tank matchup with the Orisa Sigma, which is going to happen most of the time, um, that is really the thing that makes them either win or lose. And we saw a lot of good plays coming out from Nippahog in the last series on that Sigma. And that really decided a lot of what that series turned out to be. Good fire denial, Ada Blizzard here, Ada Blizzard on Hanamura. That was very deciding of everything. It just in general was, was I think, outperforming the other Sigma. So if we can see those Sigma matchups really turning to their favor of, Ex of, of Exoblivione, then potentially the support of Snappy and Barots could not be enough. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's really who's going to turn up better than the other. And it might differ per role which team is taking the edge. And then it all comes down to the details. And that is always hard to predict. Yeah, no, that is, uh, that is right. And uh, what I do see is that Rene, uh, you know, his favorite hero is D.Va. Will we yeah. be seeing something else than an Orisa and Sigma? It's possible, but unlikely. Uh, just like it can be your favorite hero or your best hero, but that doesn't mean it's going to work in the current environment of Overwatch. We've just seen that the double shield and just everything around it is so important to run and also well, so good to run that playing a D.Va, just in general playing her, no matter who plays it, is probably already going to lose you that game. And as sad as it is to say, that's that is just the state of Overwatch we're in right now. Uh, so probably not gonna see a diva come out, but potentially for some stall picks or something else, it could happen. Uh, I just doubt it. Yeah, no. And on the side on, of uh, of Nuriki, we see uh, Cloud, who is known for his Doomfist plays. Yeah. Uh, and here on this first map, Lijiang, Lijiang Tower, that will be absolutely devastating if they let him do whatever the hell he wants to do. Um, yeah. I mean, we've, we've just seen amazing Doomfist play, and I'm looking forward to more of it because it is flashy and a lot of fun it to is. watch. So, yeah, and Cloud, Cloud has been the member to really watch out for a new Iki. Like, we've talked about all the others, but that has been the one that everyone mentions. Cloud is a beast. And if you let Cloud do what he wants, you're just not going to win. It doesn't matter which team you are. It's just this is not going to happen. Um, so, yeah, that, that, could, that could potentially be very problematic. It's starting on the far maybe here or on the reaper doesn't know i mean they're still in spawn we don't know they're going to start on legion night market that is what we know for certain yeah legion night market one of those maps that everyone knows uh, a lot of people love uh because it has everything it has long open fields it has a capture point that is you know enclosed by a lot of walls there's some boopage going on so you know there's something for everyone 
the only the only people who will not like it are the people who want the payload but that is something for a different stage right now these teams are out of the gate and they're already looking for each other doge already very aggressive here taking an off angle to fire at relax well done here on that first shot as it doge is trying to give his team as much room to maneuver as they possibly can here so ex oblivione setting the tone and setting it early but psycho and doge already going down here and cloud finds us a fix in the back line by slay murderer two supports already going down by sorry ex oblivione and nuriki in control of the point for the first six yeah, and here we see the other side of what we just saw happening on Busan in the previous series, where the pharmacy is getting the value that it needs to, and the other team isn't able to deal with the fire in the sky as well. It's really going to be up to Rene to really do most of that. Uh, it used to be the old Diva job, so they should be familiar with it. Oh, Jill is ready coming out there, finding only a effect, but that was a lot of damage coming out of that one. Yeah. Will be enough though. They get Kray on the other side, and that's a really big pick. That's a lot of damage gone and a lot of ground control gone, which I already don't have a lot of. It doesn't yeah. have six more to just run through it. No, no, he cannot because he immediately gets stopped by Cloud yet again. Who finds the Slay Murder as well? And Kreya, Doge in the back line here. Alexor in a nice little fight here. Sigma versus Sigma, always very interesting. Rene versus Alexa, but Alexa has more support from the rest of his team. And once again, Ex Oblivione have to pull back. Still in control, Nuriki. Yeah, Nuriki just showing up strong as we expected him to do. And uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, the old event just all events is finally coming into the other side here. So Vivion is going to be able to run in with those ultimates. But it's still not enough. Ooh, 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 ooh. Sigma ult versus Sigma ult. Both of Cupidic Fluxes don't find immediate targets, but at least give both of the DPS a bit of a chance to get some trading going. Barrett gets Freya back up. Now with that double right there. With that triple on the barrage. And once again, Nuriki stabilized. And it looks like they are going for a very dominant first round right there looking very sharp looking so sharp and it's really the pharmacy that just breaks it all open both doofus went down in the beginning of that fight but then kriya just gets back to press back up and Ooh. they do lost their advantage Kriya finding on the side, jumping right in there. Cloud looking for more targets right there. And at least that bongo goes down. The supercharger already down. Oh, melee attack here by Cloud taking Slay Murderer. Slay Murderer finding Barrett though with a, a bit of a, a little, you know, Moira ball. How are these balls go? Uh, doesn't matter anyway. So, on point and in control this time. Ex Oblivione. So let's see how long they can hold it for because they need to hold it for a long, long time. They really do. I mean, 100% taken up. They're going to really have to make the run back here. They do have that Death Blossom. There's not much along the other side. Sound Barrier ready for SFX as well. They should be able to hold on for a little bit at least. Yeah, that's right. The ultimate advantage is definitely there. And as SFX is going to try and keep as much of his team alive with that Sound Barrier as he can. He's not launching it just yet though. Doge with that double, very well done right there. And as you said, you know, the tank matchup is real. And Doge right now, even though his team is behind on ticks, doing a very good job. Yeah, and they build up even more ultimate. Still hold on to the sound barrier. Looking very good here. Don't have to use the Death Blossom. Uh, yes, there are some ultimates coming along on the other side, and especially Cloud with that barrage has been showing up so huge. They really yeah. need to be ready for that. But it looks like they're able to deal with the fire a little bit more. It's harder for the fire to attack a point than to defend it. So Cloud has a little bit more trouble getting into this. Yeah, that is right. But Freya, of course, Freya, of course, has a bit of a get out of jail free card, but actually goes into jail. Find Snappy and relax with that triple kill. Alexor going down. Finally gets shot down there by Freya. Psycho, painfully aware of what he was doing there. Wow, very well done. And now we're going to go into this last fight. There's going to be a group. group really flex for Alexor. Both superchargers are likely to come online. But it's really looking like SFX Sound Barrier is going to make the big difference because you can't get any value out of that Gravitic Flux if that Sound Barrier is online usually. 
Yeah, that's right. Psychomore is looking for uh, looking for a way to uh, fire that Death Blossom. Cloud as well. Looking for a way in there now. Going in there. But immediately gets fired out there. Sycamore with uh, with the Death Blossom. Finds Baron. Goes, to, goes for Relax. Even though that opening there from Alaxor was very, very well thought out. It is actually ex Oblivione who come out of the forgettingness out of the oblivion to take that first round here well played yeah and especially renee just really showed up there in the end just throwing that shield into the face of cloud so they blew themselves up that was just yeah. a heads-up play really showing that that experience they have on the diva because that's something something diva usually used to do Throw her the defense matrix, flies into the power space, and then lets her blow herself up or kills her with some like rockets or whatever. So that that's about what happens usually. And now you just have a shield that does it, so you don't even have to sacrifice your mech for it. And that's 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 something that every diva probably dreamed dreamt of. So yeah, <laughs> yeah showing up awesome. on the showing up on the sigma. And I said it before, they need to show up on the sigma in order to deal with that pharmacy. I'm not going to be here on this map. It's going to be the mirror reaper doomfist. So now we can actually see what Exilivione can do with that, and also what Nudiki can do with that. Yep, that's that's right. Nuriki uh, have been showing some uh, uh, some great style on Freya, but uh, uh, as far as I understand, Cloud is the dominant Doomfist in their matchup. Kreia already with a double kill. Cloud points the first blood as well. And Nuriki just waltzing right in there, showing that these that these Finnish Tigers are theirs to play with. Very well done. I'm doing immediately the uh, the dance to the point, making the right rotation and just pushing them back so hard. That's a uh, nice place for Nidiki. They obviously have still a little bit to go. They only just started capping the point and we saw how it went on the last stage. And there comes Ex Oliviona. They're ready for war. And the coalescence is up for both Moiras. Yep, that's right. And the lasers are coming out. Snappy already firing it. Slay Murderer as well. So a lot of healing coming in there. Even though I gotta say, Ex Oblivione wins the healing fight on the uh, uh, on the coalescence just because they were better positioned for it. Cloud looking for a target, finds it, almost kills Doge right there. So very well positioned. Couldn't you know actually close that deal out. Now looking for his next attempt and goes right on to Sycamore who needs to back out there now with the Doom Fist Ultimate. Jumping on there, doing a lot of damage, no target side. Doge finally goes down as Psycho finds the double, finds the triple with the help of Sycamore and in control. Ex Oblivione just still going in because Psycho is showing the Doom Fistage. They're doing a lot of work there. It's just uh, basically getting out with the meager strike, got the kill where Cloud couldn't. So Cloud was going on to Doge, didn't get that kill on the Orisa, but then meanwhile Psycho was getting the kill on the Snappy, and if you miss that Moira, you just, there's just so much healing gone. That's really the, the one hero you really, really cannot lose in this uh, meta right now. That's right, that's right. Now let's see what Renee can do. Renee is ready with that ultimate, and he's just waiting for Nuriki to get in there to uh, to give him an excuse to launch them all up into the air. And remember, Barrett doesn't have his ultimate there, so this could potentially be damaging and could be huge. No immediately, no one dying immediately out of that. And Psycho with a double taking Barrett and Snap. So no healers right there for Nuriki. As it is yet again out of oblivion, ex oblivione to take that point and to keep it in the cloud over that triple wow this isn't over just yet well cloud is finally starting to do some work there on the doom fist gets another one there and it's just cleaning them up now they're pushing them back they don't want to go into that doom fist and rightfully so because cloud if you get that triple straight away and the doom fist is on a roll it's going to be so much harder to tear him down and psycho was gone so they didn't have that matchup Yep, that's right, and now it's Freya. Freya very close to that death plot, and looking for an opening, looking for the enemy to just jump in. But there is already a death plot coming up from Sycamore, who takes the double snap on him, relax, taking it. So it's Psycho helping out together with SFX, and once again, Ex Oblivione looking like they want their point back, and they're gonna get it. Yeah, they do get it back, and they are the potential is so close. It's gonna be like basically one fight territory. Whoever wins this next fight is likely gonna win the map. And when we look at the ultimates, hey now we have it the other way around where Barretts will have that sound barrier that was so instrumental to the last point. 
Yeah, that's right. And while we have a second before this goes all the way, remember to check out the match arena. You can do you can donate here to the Monkey Bubble organization as well as to the uh, to the prize pool. Uh, and you can play a bit of the quest, so that's fun. But looking at the quest right now, Ex Oblivion trying to uh, save whatever they can. Rene going down, Psycho very low right now, as it is Nuriki who are trying to get that point back on. And they do have more bodies on the payload. Alexor is trying trying to find a bit of an angle right there. And now it looks as if Nuriki are getting the 1-1 and they do. Yeah, that was a story of support ults there. Barrett's had that fan barrier ready. Snappe was getting very close on that uh, on that coalescence once again. And just the power of those combined uh, was just too much to deal with on the other side of Ex Oblivion. And so once again, very close stage. Uh, and it's just, it, it's become the tale of the sound barriers right now. I think that's really what we're looking at where it, it, the one team that has it up for that last fight will probably win out the map if the the percentages are both in one by charge. Yeah, so no. We're potentially going to the Symmetra here, though. That could probably be just a rollout strat, but could be more. That could be more. That could definitely be more. I mean, uh, uh, we've seen Symmetra. Once they can set up and you have Psycho in there to group everything, you know, in and out of whatever that Symmetra can set up, that could work, but they're not going for it. Actually, they're going for the Reaper. Cloud, though, up in the air together with Barrett. So they're going for the Far Mercy yet again. And that worked like a charm for a, a big chunk of time. And so it does right now with a double kill. Freya helps out on the Sycamore. Triple kill for Cloud. And it should go to Nuriki with that first little bit. The payload and the team kill are in for Nuriki. Uh, so quick on those kills. There's a lot of damage coming out from Cloud straight away. Kriya, like I said, helping out as well. There's a, a good synergy between those DPS to find the right targets and to focus the right targets in the right order as well. They're really starting to, to really look at that Moira as that is the one we need to get. And they do get the Moira a lot of times. So do X only on the other side though. The Slay Murderer and Snappy really have to be on their uh, on their best behavior, so to speak. That's right, and uh, look at Cloud here, firing through these small slits, that's just exactly what you want to do in this kind of situation. Just find the off angle, and Cloud is using that very well, but this time, Ex Oblivione coming in, already two people going down, Crayon and Alexa down, Cloud fires the ultimate, finds one target, but then he needs to go down afterwards. So, Ex Oblivione in control of the point, 39 to 1 right now. Yeah, they do get it back. Uh, they're starting to get, come up on that. I would say they're going to start coming up on ultimates, but they're going to start trying to get to, to be coming up on ultimates again. They use quite a lot of their psycho is going to be close to the meteor strike, but it's basically all they have. Uh, with that coalescence and supercharger, that's been such a deadly combination in this meta that it looks good for needing to be taken. Yeah, that's right. Cloud this time, though, I get, uh, is uh, he's, he's back on the Doom Fist because it was the second time that Rene foiled his plans. Psycho jumping in there. Can't really do anything with that. A lot of damage, but not enough to actually close it out. And immediately gets clobbered against the wall right there. So, Nuriki is uh, trying to get control back of the point. And right now, it looks like they are making a decent effort. Now, though, the graphitic blocks. Alexa almost going down. Psycho getting the kill here from the sidelines, jumping into the main tank, and is just trying to get as much uh, done as he can. Barrett finally gets, uh, gets some time. So, look at that. Look at the SFX just weaving in and out of this fight, trying to give his team a fighting chance right there. So, and it is Sycamore pulling up the ultimate, gets Cloud down, gets Snappy down, and once again, Ex Oblivione on the upside of this fight. Yeah, this sound barrier came out as well from um, from SFX in the end there, and that's really what pushed it over the edge. They really needed that one. Meanwhile, Barrett's is now coming back up to their own sound barrier, and the coalescence the coalescence is, is on the other the other way around, where Ex Oblivion will have the coalescence, but they won't have the coalescence on the side of Niriki. So when we look at the ult the DPS ultimate, same thing. It's sort of like a flip situation there, and the tank ultimates are now going to be aligned for Niriki. So that's probably going to make the difference. The ultimate coming out for Alexor though, and uh, now the sound barrier not being available, actually not uh, actually being used right there. It is Nuriki who are able to pull the trigger on that one, and they do, they clearly do. Relax with the double, and this should be going over quite easily. 
Yeah, nice combination using their using that uh, the gravitic flux, and of course, since SFX had used that sound barrier, it was not the case that they couldn't get any kills from it. Uh, they use their own sound barrier as a safekeeping. I don't know if they needed to, but you know they they got the win out of it, so that's nice. It's gonna be last fight territory this time. Neither team having the sound barrier, but it's gonna be Snappe with that coalescing. Yup, and the coalescing's already coming out though. They are forcing back Ex Oblivione as far forward as they can. Nuniki with a very aggressive strat. The uh, the supercharger in the back line doesn't really help them anymore right there, as it is now a lot of pressure coming out from Ex Oblivione, who wants that point and then making that sure. Prayer getting SFX with a uh, uh, with a nice little bat, um, how do you say? Death Blossom. Both Death Blossoms actually out. So full Beyblade. Ex Oblivione looks like they can turn this around yet again, and they do yet again. So, last fight territory indeed. But this time, on the upside for Ex Oblivione. Yeah, Ex Oblivione, they, they got back into it. They now will have their sound barrier almost ready for SFX for this last fight. Cloud will have the Meteor Strike, so does Psycho. I think the main difference maker here is that Snappy might get a Coalescence up mid-fight if it goes long enough. And Alex are getting close to that Gravitic Flux, but it's, uh, it's gonna be close. As an ex though, very close to that sound barrier as well. So that could be a, a lot of defensive potential right there. Cloud jumps in. Psycho though with the double kill on the set. So Cloud can't really keep up to Psycho and that great, great Doomfist play that he's been showing right now. Sycamore with the double on Cloud and Alexor. Overtime Wick is running. Both teams are fighting for it. But it should be Ex Oblivione taking the first map. And very well done. But if these teams keep on playing like that, this is going to be a long series, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we're basically looking at a relationship between ultimates between these teams, like how the way they use their ult economy is so important. And like I said, in that fight where uh, where Nuriki used their sound barrier, where they used the Graphitic Flux before it, had they not used it, they might have had it for that last fight, and it might have been very impactful, but it's all ifs and buts. And when it's, when it's all that, you can't really expect uh, any any facts to come out it's all speculation and it's all it's, it's all we, we don't know what would have happened otherwise basically so right now we're looking to a situation where the maps might make a little bit of difference on what what heroes the teams play uh then the maps might also really dictate where they play how they play maybe they're better on certain maps than others it's obviously going to be the choice of niriki now to be able to pick the next map but i'm pretty sure no actually i think it was ex Oblivione that got the map pick on the first one because uh, they're technically the higher seed. Yeah. Um, and then Nuriki now gets to play Big Blizzard World, which they do. And Ooh. we've seen a lot of great Farah play on, on Blizzard World. So I think that is really an interesting choice and probably one that could re really work out for them very well. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's going to be a... Uh, it's probably going to be a close one once again. But then again, Control, we said it before, not one that usually sets the tone for a series. So... Is Nuriki coming gonna pull it back? That's what that remains to be seen. But Blizzard World is definitely a place where I think they could do it. Yeah, that's right. So chat, let me know what you think. Is Nuriki pulling it back on the Blizzard World or is X Oblivione sending them to the abyss of being forgotten at least until the next tournament? You let us know which one of you of these teams has your favoritism. I want to see some really, really cool copy pastas. I want to see oh, that yeah. chat running up and down. So let's get into this. Let's get into Blizzard World because these teams are getting into it straight for you. Yeah, let's go to Blizzard World. I hope this theme park once again actually happens in the future. Uh, it, it's probably a while away, even if they have plans. It's going to cost a lot of money, and we know how to think about money re recently. Uh, oh, yeah. No, that, that's un that's unfair. It's uh, it's obviously it's obviously just a uh, a game company. Like let, let's not expect these big this this big of a thing from them. <laughs> right now, though, they are uh, they're they're putting up fun stuff. Overwatch is a great game, and we're seeing more and more of it. These teams really showing off everything that Overwatch has to offer at the moment, and uh, it does look like Cloud is not sending up on that far right now on the defense. So that is an interesting choice. Might be something they switch off to later on, but right now I think on the defense they just want to be safe. They don't want to give the enemy the opportunity to go for that hit scan and just flip far out of the sky because it is a map with yeah. longer sidelines where that is definitely possible. 
Yeah, that's right. And any good widow will get uh, get, get that Farah out of the sky in a matter of seconds. So, 13 seconds on the clock. Looking at the attacking team, Doge and Rene. No surprises there with Sycamore and Psycho uh, running with that uh, with that nice little double trouble that they've been doing. So, no surprises all in all. And SFX and Slay Murderer on the Moira and the Lucio. So, a lot of speed on this setup, even though you have two very slow tanks. But, you know, that's exactly what you want to see right now. Slow tanks getting sped up by one of the greatest Lucios that we've seen in a long while. Rene already setting up his team to go for the long way around. Now Doge with that shield and they are going ham immediately. Just no break. Just going straight in. The hunt is on, ladies and gentlemen, as these teams are giving it the good fight. SFX gets Barris. Lucio versus Lucio fight has been set up. Cloud gets Psycho down, though. So, Nuriki holding it up right there on the defensive side. That attack, as impressive as it has been, has been halted. And Doge going down was really the key to that because it looked really good. They saw something, and I think what they saw was the shield being put down by Relax. They said, okay, so we can beat their shield cooldown, we can just go through it, and they can't reposition their shield. And that's why they w didn't go the long way. But then when Doge going down, that was really what just stopped that plan from happening. <laughs> yeah, that's right, and the Coalescence is out here for Snappy, and it is a doozy of a Coalescence. Snappy Murder is, uh, sorry, Slay Murderer is immediately setting it up on the other side as well. So the Moira fight is real cut with the double kill from the sidelines, as Doge finds Freya, though. So, once again, this fight is far from over, but capturing at this point is Exoblivione, le letting them know that they will not... I'm sorry, actually, not Exoblivione, it's Nuriki. I'm sorry, they switched sides, didn't they? Uh, no, Nuriki no? was already in blue last time around. No sides. My bad, my bad. Uh, my bad. They're the same. No, I, I, they they me out. I thought they were swapping sides. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sycamore finally finding Cloud there after he took down Psycho. My bad. Yeah, no, it, it, you know what? It, uh, it's a hard game to follow sometimes. Like Teams do swap sides a lot of the time, but usually the team that gets to pick the map picks the defense, and Nuriki was already in blue, so that's why they you know, didn't have to swap sides. Right now, though, we're looking at, uh, looking at an old situation that's going to be basically the Christmas of the 4th of July combined. It's going to be a party and a, and a half for right that's now. Right. That's right, and the fireworks have started. First, the ultimates coming in there for both of these Sigmas, and then Cloud jumping in there with a meteor strike sycamore the death plus that fights freya alexa finally stops sycamore though and it is far from over supercharges are all the way around the doge is not giving it up an inch more than he has to very close right there though is uh, uh to dying but right now ex oblivione in control of this payload still rolling and we are uh, far from stopping this road trip and they're making such good time they're even keeping the ult economy relatively even at their sound they were still in the back only three are there with that that's awesome they do touch the point but at the cost of cloud drive <laughs> that's right and that chat is still copy pasting it up and i want to see it that way come on these teams both need your support to show us exactly that Psycho taking down Kreia right now as Sycamore is just looking around that nice little kiosk for more targets to wail on. Cloud, very low, decides to jump in nevertheless because Snappy is running the coalescence. Both coalescences are out though, so not a lot of targets jumping up and down. Cloud finally going down to Sycamore as Kreia is taking Sycamore out of the fight by himself. So, one Reaper still up there and let's see what they do with it. Looks like it's gonna go in the way of the defense though. And Nidhi is really doing a good job of holding that back because they were so close to losing that losing the second checkpoint. Psycho and Doge falling. I don't think they're gonna be able to have the sustain and the damage to really finish this off on the other side. And now yeah. of course free spawns are so close for the defense that it's really it, it might not even be one fight. They might have to actually win two fights instead of Sony Vione. 
and a lot of time being burnt off the clock already. They started that last fight with about three and a half minutes left, I think, and now they've only got yeah. two. So that was a long fight. They didn't get what they needed out of it. They do have a lot of ults on the online, though. The defense is not as close to those as, as they maybe wanted to. Yeah, exactly. So even if they have to fight two, uh, two fights or one very long and extended one, you know, the only way going is, you know, getting around that is to just flash fire and get as many people down as quickly as you can. And they certainly have the option of doing that. So Psycho looking for a target right there. Has to jump back on that uh, uh, on that ultimate that was coming up right there. Take him all though. Sycamore still has the Death Blossom, now looking for targets, but cannot get any close enough. Psycho with a double kill on Cloud and Raditz, and finally Sycamore, uh, Sycamore is taking down the Snappy. Once again, Ex Oblivione running it in. See, one short fight, a lot of resources pulled into that one though. Yeah, loss, uh, there were a lot of resources pulled into it, but then again, uh, they also had, got quite a few resources back, so they'll be close to the meter strike as the will have that oh so important sound barrier. And uh, on the other side, they will have their tank ultimates almost up, but not much else to work with. It's really empty on the side of Niki, and with two and a half minutes still on the bank, they really want to hold them for at least a bit longer, and obviously full hold them if possible. Yeah, that's right. Two minutes 20 to go, though. And with that kind of tempo, a full hold is something that you, you know, that's quite hard to actually do. Alexor now has an ultimate and would be a great moment to actually pull it now as SFX doesn't have the ultimate up uh, on, it, on his own side yet. Has it in time? Clutches it out and the sound barrier is out. So no one dies on the side of XW SFX, more lucky than he was smart, but that one just very, very important to run out. And that payload doesn't Hello. stop anytime soon. It hasn't stopped Hello. moving for a while now, and it's looking kind of Hello like Fiona has gotten the momentum back. A lot of that on the back of the ultimate they had, and now they're going to have to more to work with. Oh, relax already down. Yup, he is already down. Barrett is following him straight into that after a nice coalescence with that double, with that triple, it's Slay Murderer. Take him all closing it out with the double, and that should be it. First round. Yeah, taking that last point with six, in six minutes and 41 seconds to be exact, because you get about eight seconds for, for every checkpoint. Uh, so you get eight minutes total for a map, and they didn't go into overtime anywhere. So uh, 1 minute 19 left on the clock going into their defense now. Nuriki has a little bit of a task ahead of them. It's still very much possible to get to the end. Um, but that's that's the, uh, the question. Uh, but they're going to have to really... Tr they, they obviously want to beat the time bank, and it's possible. But yeah. they kinda, cannot get held up too much. I mean, not, they, they, to be fair, actually, Viona was held up a little bit there. A lot of that having to do with just superior old rotation from Nuriki at times. Um, but really after that, they got back into their groove and then they started rotating their ultimates very efficiently again. And Exibivione just came out on top of it. So once again, it's a, it's a series about ult economy. Yep, that is a series about ult economy. Nuriki have one advantage though. On the attacking side, we've seen they have a very aggressive style and that, you know, this map can just work for you in, the, in that regard, you know? Uh, this map, once you get the ball rolling or the payload in this case, it's hard for the uh, for you to stop, you know, especially on the first two points. The third one, basically just one corner where you can uh, can get a little bit of a stall out. Uh, so, you know, Nuriki, still not in trouble or as much trouble as Ex Oblivione would want them to be. So, uh, in terms of matchups, we don't see any strange things happening on Ex Oblivione's side. What do you think on the side of uh, Nuriki? Uh, Korea is just there to check if they have something that they can shoot out of the sky, getting an opening pick. I don't think they're going to stick with that for very long. No, it looks like they're already walking back to spawn, got one shot off, and just decided, you know what, going back to Reaper. So it's going to be the mirror matchup once again. I'm surprised we're not seeing the fire out of Cloud. Maybe they just don't like it on this map, but it has been working for other teams. So potentially we'll see that later on. Right now, though, they're just going to choose to run in with the mirror. That's right, and let's see. Yep, they're going the long way around, so not using the same strat that Exoblivione went for. Now, though, they're doubling back, rotating very well right there. As now jumps in and out of the fight as much as he possibly can. 
Snappy. Snappy trying to keep as much of his team alive as he possibly can, and he does so in a very impressive manner. Both teams still, uh, you know, for the most part, full health. Coalescences coming out right there, and it is Barrett who first bites the bullet. That's the first block of this entire match. Uh, after like what 25 seconds very impressive right now but now nuniki has to pull back a slight bit or at least get proper heels Kreia finds a rock to the face and now it is ex oblivione who are breaking out and cleaning up yeah, looking so strong there on the defense so far yes like you said it took ages for the first kill to happen but once it happened you did see it collapsing really quickly and that's basically what we've been seeing in the meta right now is it, it, it was the same thing with goats right just one person goes down everything just falls like a domino it's not as brawly a lot of the times which is still it can be but it all depends on which hero goes down first and right now the defense they have the ultimate to really sustain this out for long that's right. Um, the only ultimate that really is uh, there for Nuriki on the attacking side is that ultimate coming in from the Sigma. And that gets, you know, at least healed out quite well. While on the other side, Ex Oblivione and Psycho specifically just takes them out of the park. Psycho, look at him. Psycho is absolutely in control of any engagement that he chooses to, ta to take. And it's impressive. I know you spell it differently, but he kind of looks like a psycho, doesn't he? It's just, uh, it's just that Doomfish is going ham right now, and really, they, 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 again, they just don't use any more ultimates than they really need to. Only the tank ultimates down, they'll really still have an advantage in the next fight. The only thing that, I mean, if the fight goes a little bit longer, they'll have one ultimate disadvantage. They still are rotating and encircling them out so well. Yeah, and I want to see more of, uh, more of Psycho from uh, from our observing team as well. As the Sound Barrier comes out, and now he has the time to make it happen with a double kill. Goes out for the triple. Psycho with the Quadra, and he just cleans it out. Very, very well done. Team kill, and four out of six kills out of the Psycho. He goes so ham, it's not kosher anymore. And it's really what they... they... They needed to do that on the defense. They needed to use their sound barrier. They needed to use their meteor strike in order to get out of the pickle they were in. Because Slay Murder had gone down to Cloud, got a very good opening pick. And that Moira is the one you really cannot lose. But that means they did have to maybe over invest ultimates than they would maybe otherwise would have liked to. And they're gonna be a little bit down in this next fight, especially that sound barrier is gonna be huge to miss. Yeah, that is that is true. I mean, that uh, that uh, barrier was very very nice, nicely used. Prayer though, with the uh, with the ultimate coming in, and now Klaus jumping in on Ex Oblivione doesn't find anyone but Sycamore with a double on Barrett to relax yet to yet again. So Ex Oblivione still in control right there after a very nice double, but more bodies on point for Nuriki. Alexo in trouble though. Goes down. Snappy goes down. And they have to pull back, or they have to commit on that. It's only one second, they don't have time to go back. Psycho finds Cloud, closes it out. Rene finds Barrett, and that's it. That should be it. Night hold. Full hold there on, on Blizzard World. And I mean, had, sure, like losing this map in the first place is not that. That, that would have probably happened to Nudiki. Like, that, that's something that I would not have yeah. been that surprised by. But a full hold here. It was their map pick as well. It's just. Such, such dominance from Exhibitione. Not only in the attack where Nidiki did get a good fight wins. Look at the timing here on Psycho. Yeah. I'm sorry, I have to highlight that. You know, That's the, true. the Quadra. That was just beautifully executed. And I don't even think that they needed the sound barrier there in order to execute no. that. No, I really don't think they did. And it, it was just, uh, it, it showed up so huge. It's actually, yeah, I don't, even, I don't even know what to say about that anymore. Psycho just, yeah. Just going ham, like we said it. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. it's it's not it's not okay anymore. Right now, though, I mean, Nidiki in a really tough spot. Obviously, none of these teams will be eliminated if they lose this match. But Nidiki would obviously not like to go to that losers bracket. They would have to go up against the winner of, uh, let me see, Nocturnal Aspect and Indignation, who are yeah. uh, facing off in another game right now. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, you don't you don't really want to be in that spot because those teams have been show looking really well. And that means that we're going to have a very, it, it's already a very tight tournament when it comes to these things, but that would really shake up everything because Niriki came in unsurprisingly strong. Uh, well, surprisingly strong, maybe to some people, but just some others, they said, you know, Cloud comes in, you basically can't lose anymore. Uh, 
But then, then you know, they, they show up on Exo Viviona, and Psycho is really pumping up, pumping up the damage. They're really working well together as a unit. Their old yeah. rotation is on points. Like there's, there's almost nothing you can flaw to, you can flaunt on them. But the, that, just, that's, yeah, that, that's true. I mean, there's a bit of aggression uh, coming in from uh, uh, from Sycamore. Uh, mm -hmm. um, that, is. you know, sometimes, sometimes it looks a little bit, you know how do you say a bit much but every time they are able to pull it out and that is due to sfx and slay murderer who are just an absolute unit an absolute unit on the support side now though yeah. they finally switched sides so this time i have you i can see that and they're going on hanamura so um hanamura uh, a map that uh, that we've seen earlier in the in the last match very yeah. cool in the map pool um mm -hmm. So what what are we going to uh, going to see? What are we going to expect on these two teams? I mean, on once again, I don't think anyone doesn't run a Bastion on Hanamura right now. It's very hard not to with the uh, just with the strength that Bastion provides to everybody. So I'm expecting once again the Bastion to come out. It's it's something that um, uh, yeah, it, it just you just can't not run it basically. That's mostly on defense though. On attack, you can see some other things. We can see some bars once again come out as well. Uh, it's always the question: What do you run with the bastion? Do you run a May or do you run a Farah? Uh, that also is a question on attack or defense. Yeah. Uh, on defense though, I think most teams have been been more reluctant to uh, to not run the Farah because I mean it's still one of those things where they can pick a hits kind of pluck her out of the sky, but there's such a large wall in the way, such a lot of infrastructure you can use. As deep and on the defense as a far, you'll probably be fine as well. So it, it's it is a question. The main thing I once again am curious about is are either of these teams going to use Symmetra for more than just the teleporter up to the high ground on point B? Uh, because if, if you can use her creatively for some nice rotations, that would be really nice to see. And uh, Symmetra is just a fun hero, and she's really good right now. Yeah, no, that's that that's right. We've talked about the fact. That you know the big brain plays are the ones where you can come out of unexpected angles. Now you oh, know yeah. these guys have seen a lot of the tricks in the book, so uh, uh, it's not going to be fully unexpected on most things. But if you, for instance, take that Symmetra and uh, uh, rather than trying to go on the higher high ground, uh, basically you know immediately jump behind the enemy's bunker. We've seen that in the Euro yeah. Cup. We've seen that happen, and that worked like a charm. So that would be absolutely fantastic if these teams could show us what you could do with that. Though, if you have um, on the side of Exobolivion a guy like Psycho, uh, or guys like Psycho and Sycamore, who, you know, just find their own flanks and just make a, you know, perpetual pincer movement, I'm not entirely sure whether or not you should try something like that. Now, on Nuriki's side, they could and they should do something like that because, you know, in the pure mirror matchup, it looks like they are delving it under every single time. So what do you think about that one? Um, I think that's very, definitely true. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's not one of those things where I'm saying, you know what, let's, uh, 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 let's shake things up necessarily. But it's just something you see teams do, and especially in this game mode. It's just something that we're not uh, uh, we're not un it's not familiar for us to see something <laughs> yeah. to see the same thing. Old did not see the same thing as we see in other maps. So, like we said, the Reaper Doomfist is not as common on this map. It's still getting played, but not as much because yeah. of that high amount of Bastion play, and you can't really flank around as easily. They always see you coming. Uh, and even if you try and approach the Doomfist, the Bastion will just, you know, beam you down. So uh, that's why I'm expecting them to both change things up. But then again, is it really changing up or is it just both teams will do the exact same thing still? So it's not really changing up. It's just we do the same. We do a mirror. We just do a different mirror. And yeah. if that's the case, I don't know if the play style difference that those compositions have necessarily works out in the favor of Yuriki. Because that's what we're really looking at. Is this play style with Bastions going to work out better for them or worse? Yeah, but um, I mean, um, the playstyle could uh, go weather, uh, better for them um, because that's yeah. that's something that I would uh, I would say uh, because the unsung hero on Ex Oblivione has yeah. been Doge. Doge makes so much room. Doge yeah. is there when he has to be, and taking Doge out of the equation just by putting a Bastion up there and making sure that he cannot do what he has been doing this entire time uh, mm -hmm. that you know will immediately take. 
forty percent out of the tempo of Ex, uh, Ex Oblivione. Though Ex yeah. Oblivione are going on the defense first, so that is something for the attacking side. But you know, at the end of the day, the attack wins these matches because it is then that you have to gain as much time as you can. Let's see if Nuriki can uh, can can do that. Take something out of the hat, and uh, you know, make it happen, make it snappy. Yeah, and uh, for now, that's all still questions. No, we have no answers. And we're going to get the answers because we're going to go into Hanamura. I'm really excited for this one. Uh, like I said, it's the one map where most teams do switch it up. Uh, just not play the same uh, Doomfist Reaper, which is as much as switching up as we can really hope for these days. But I'm mostly interested in what's going to happen for the supports, to be honest. Because we've seen mm -hmm. a lot of Baptiste play here, obviously, with the bunker. Uh, we've seen some Ana play come out as well. Um, so it will all depend on what DPS and support combo you really run, how you play it. And on the defense right now from Exodibiona, I do think we're going to see something that is not Bastion, which is incredibly surprising. Which is incredibly surprising, yes. I mean, um, they already have to, of course, lock in their, uh, their choices as much as they can. Um, so, you know... But their choice in this case is, you know, never change a winning team. Seiko, yeah. take them all, make it happen. On the other side, Niriki, with that, uh, with that Sombra. They're gonna, scout. they're gonna scout, they're just gonna check out what do they have, and if it's not a Bastion, then I think they're actually gonna be happy about that, because it's gonna be so hard for them to de defend this against a comp that's specifically tailored to break this defense, because they don't really have that strong of a chokehold that they can get through it. Yeah, but the scout is real, uh, running in, going back and of course Kreia has already changed his sights that's right up uh, man the times when we saw a sombra in every single game and we're waiting for these cool emps i hope they're not over but at least they're getting rarer by the minute relax though so they're putting up his shields relax and alexa trying to slowly get their way in there but ex oblivion are not making it easy for them at this point as they are moving now finally trying to get the long way around the lexo uh, finds the rock renee and psycho already taking it down there and it is sycamore with the double kill bye bye first push uh, team kill gong comes out what a nice one that was just that defense was just so overwhelmingly good and they're forcing Nidiki into this in this mirror matchup where Nidiki was maybe not expecting to have to run a mirror matchup there, or at least not this one. They maybe expecting to do something with a Bastion. And then all of a sudden they have to go back to this. It, it's really putting them out of their comfort zone, I feel. Yeah, that's right. And they're forcing them into these close range engagements by taking uh, uh, by taking it in there, you know, very close comparatively to uh, uh to whatever bunker comp set up uh, you could think of now, but the girl at are out. Psycho, so at least a little bit of leeway right there, but Sycamore and Doze already make that point absolutely moot. Now, Sycamore taking down Korea yet again. So, you know, in control, ex oblivion. Yeah, Nidiki just seems lost. I don't, I don't really know. I, like I said, I think they're being pushed out of their comfort zone. They don't really know they want to do, or at least they know what they want to do, but they're, they're not allowed to do it or something like that. Baratis, though, is close to this, this sound barrier. I don't think that Exclusiona might expect us to be up so early when SS expects to be Oh, that's a big, huge ultimate that could potentially have a lot of implications. Alexor gets a lot of people up there. Uh, it was a bit of a shame that Freya couldn't have the ultimate, and now it's that sound barrier. Another coalescence coming up with Play Murderer, though. So. Still, nothing has been said, and it is Ex Oblivion just breaking out there and now taking the fight directly onto Nariki's doorstep, and they are winning it. Renee and Sycamore cleaning it up. Once again, reset for Nariki. Yeah, and I think Barrett's was expecting SFX to also have the sound barrier, so he said, you know what, let's use Gravitic Flux, then they use their sound barrier, and then we can use ours and win because we have the later sound barrier, which is usually true. That's usually how that goes in that matchup. But joke was on them because SFX didn't have the sound barrier when the Gravitic Flux came out, they didn't have it after. So they weren't yeah. ready to do follow up on the Gravitic Flux. And that's kind of where it went wrong for Nidiki. The idea was there, but they, they made it they made a call and the call was just sadly in the Oh look at Sycamore going in all the way in the back right there. 
and that's what I meant. He is a psychopath when it comes to this. Now, though, the ultimate's coming in from both the Doomfists, I believe. Both the Doomfists are already down. No, Cloud is still in control. Is still there. And now it could be Nuriki running in him all the way. Team kill on the site, and that should be a cap. Yeah, they're gonna cap in here, uh, and it seems almost impossible not to. Uh, relax, throw out the, the, uh, wow. Throw the supercharger. Cloud with the nice meteor strike, but the biggest thing was just they got Psycho straight away, Slay Murderer soon after, and if you lose that Doomfist and Moira, neither of them can clutch it back. So that's really what they're, they're good at right now, they clutch things back with either a healing or a damage output. And this, this high ground hold is very interesting, once again there's no bastards, it's not something we've seen a lot this game. Yeah. Yep, that is right. So let's see what Treya is going to do here. He is jumping in there, has his ultimate, looking to pull that trigger. Let's see if he can actually do that. And yes, he can. But a oh, oh, bit of a miscommunication, I believe, with Alexor, because that could have been more devastating if he would have held off a tiny bit longer. That interaction is uh, it's, uh, quite unfortunate there. But Snappy with the Carles Sanberry coming up red right there for X Oblivio. And right now, Snappy trying to find as many targets as they possibly can. In control, as of this point, though, is still X Oblivio. Yeah, they were looking to maybe use it, but that healing came, came in just in time to get Doge back online, and that was really the one that submitted it back. If that Orisa goes down, you can keep speeding through them and just kill them all. But uh, it's just the, the right people lived and the wrong people died. I think that's really what we're looking at. So you need to get the right picks. Uh, and I think Nuriki also lost the wrong person at the wrong time. I think actually Cloud went down and he's come back from spawn. And as soon as that happens, you're missing a lot of that pick potential you really need, that cleanup potential. Uh, and then before the healing came back in on Doge, we didn't do quite finish off. And now they're going to be at an ultimate deficit as well. So really up against it again. Yep, that's right. One minute 42 go. No ultimate versus two support ultimates on the side of an ex Oblivio. But they're going on the lower right side. They're taking the scenic route, trying to pull something up. And that actually looks like it does a decent amount of damage. But in the response here is Ex Oblivio, Slay Murderer, uh, uh, hauling out the Coalescence and taking the double. Cloud and Barrett's already down. So that is a lot of damage uh, and healing that's already going down. Relax has a supercharger, but I suggest you not use it. And he's holding on to it while his team gets taken down by Rene with that triple kill. Yeah, uh, very nice cleanup as well. It was just Cloud went in and he did the one thing that as Doomfist you're apparently not supposed to do anymore. I've talked to quite to, to a few Doom play, Doomfist players where they they all say it. Don't use that third ability because I mean you need it to get out. It's either your E or your right click. You need to have something to get out. You just use one to initiate. The other one to maybe get some follow up with some shots, which is usually your uppercut. And then you use either right click or the E to get out, uh, depending on which you use first. But didn't do that, came too close to the Sigma, and they got taken out himself, and that's the that one. Psycho. Psycho looking for targets. He's going in there, and he fights Cloud. And now he has to meet the Dragon and get out of jail. Free card with the double kill! And Orisa is absolutely helpless as Sycamore and Psycho just fight them and collapse on them. That team kill, 30 seconds to go. This should be over by all accounts. Yeah, 10 right. seconds, I mean, I don't even know if they can touch, maybe the wrecking ball can, maybe the side, I think the meteor strike will also be Yep, that they are, oh, but Sycamore is pulling the trigger on that Death Blossom, Slay Murderer with the Coalescence to follow it up, so that's a lot of damage and a lot of healing coming into very little enemy players, the Diva coming in there, Alexor trying to stall it out as much as he can, well Relax is on the way back in there, but that should be it, the overtime week, running, running, gone! Overtime takes down, Nuriki doesn't cap point B, unfortunately, and that means that they're gonna have to do very well their defense. Yes, they can still draw the map and also still win the map, but yeah, I mean they really they really want to get that full hold on A. If you if you're gonna if they even get an attempt at B, Nuriki is gonna be on such under such pressure, and you really don't want to have that happen. So they're gonna go for that full hold, but how are they gonna do that? That is the main question right here. Because are they gonna go for that bastion now that they're on the defense? Or are they going to stick with this attempt for the mirror matchup? 
Yeah, no, that is uh, that that is what they uh, what what they need to find out, and they need to find out quickly because by now they should be feeling that pressure to a maximum setup. Uh, you know, Niriki want to win, and um, you can see that. You know, they're still throwing enough mud at the wall, seeing what sticks. Uh, the only downside is is that apparently the wall that is ex oblivio is Teflon coated. Right now, they cannot do anything wrong. No, I mean, it's it's not, it's not like it's extremely surprising, of course. I mean, it, it is, it is, it's, it's, Oblivion is a really good team. Um, but Niriki was looking so strong in the past, like just yesterday, that we were expecting them to potentially just be able to win this one as well. And they're not looking, well, they're not looking so hot right now. That's uh, is essentially, essentially what I'm trying to say here. They are going to go with that Bastion Fara defense, which we have seen work out for a lot of teams in a very well, uh, proper fashion. But we haven't seen any cool holds with it so far. I, I don't know if that's because of the composition or because of something else that happened. Uh, Seiko is scouting out a little bit though. I don't think they've seen everything yet, so it might take a little bit longer before they go back to spawn. Yeah, that's I think bad. they have a pretty good idea that there's a Bastion there. It's either that, or they're finally taking that Sombra and using it for what it's made, for, uh, what it was made for, countering a Bastion. But we'll see what's going to happen. Brow, uh, Cloud here, up in the air, trying to find whatever uh, whatever he expects. There you go. There was a bad cap, a sneaky little thing by Psycho, who was just trying to get them off that high ground, but just forcing them off, which is a valid strategy. Rene with the double kill uh, on Relax and on Snap. Sorry. Uh, on uh, uh, on snap invincibility zone prayer finally going down and it looks as if ex Oblivio are going to take that control going to keep that control because it is two forces already down first point gone attack objective B and they just need one third cap that so what do you think it was a super smart rotation coming out those just went underneath the uh, the, the, the platform the new platform that they're on and cool snapping off it meanwhile relax was already under a lot of pressure the, the rotations were happening too late from the side of Nuriki so now they're going to be set up for the defense and I don't think they're ready for this Yep, no, they are absolutely not ready for this. There's no way they can set up Cloud though with the double kill. Doge and Seiko going down after a nice barrage. Doge gets Cloud out of the sky on the other side as well. But Slay Murderer, Slay Murderer is now going in there trying to find both of those tanks. But find the Doofus instead, who cannot close it up. Freya is unable to get Slay Murderer. And Slay Murderer and Renee are slowly moving back all the way around right there. And they are still not done yet. Psycho now has an EMP, so this is going to be beautiful. It's looking pretty good right now for uh, oh, XB oh, still. Uh, I mean, they have five minutes to cap a third, so that should be enough. But then again, we thought Nuniki could maybe capture capture a tick as well, and they didn't. So it's all possible here in Hanamura, but that EMP is probably going to be very big. They did detect them, though, so they know where the summer oh, is. Yeah. There it is. Yes, three. That's a good opening to this fight. Yup, and that is wide open now. Sycamore going down though. Alexor finds him together with a little bit of help from his friend. Rene with the ultimate EMP is coming out. And that should double kill Snappy and Barrett. Very well done right there. And end of story, this should be. The only one who is still standing strong on this side is Kreia. Kreia now going down. Cycle with the double on Cloud and Kreia. Come on then. It is time to cap it, but they can't they can't make it happen, you know, anytime soon. This fight is extended. Yeah, they need to keep getting the picks and it doesn't look like they're able to do it so far. I mean they're getting them, but they keep they, the stalls keep coming back in. But there it is, they don't touch the point for long enough. And that means this map, this point, this series gotta go to way of Ex Oblivione and be 100 percent des uh, deserved, obviously. Play of the yeah. Play of the game. Psycho, Psycho yet again, yeah. yeah, and that is that was that that was that beautiful setup here. Wade just jumps in, waits for that ultimate to finish, and then closes it out. Take more coming in to help him out, but that was absolutely unnecessary at this point. He was in full oh, yeah. control of that one, beautifully done, and you know, absolute textbook when it comes to using the ultimate of the Doomfist. Yeah, and right now, I mean, that's that's that we're looking at. We're, we're going to send Ex Oblivione to face off against Ad Astra Pera Spera in the semifinals. Ooh. So that's the uh, 
yeah, that's that's they're gonna they're gonna have they're one win away from getting to the grand finals right now. Both of those teams and I mean, both of them looking very good. Both getting a three zero in their in their in, in their games here. So uh, the the upper bracket quarterfinal. I don't even want to call it just round three of the upper bracket. Um, and it means Nidiki is gonna have to go against either Nocturnal Aspect or Indignation. That match hasn't finished yet. Uh, and Vox Nihili gonna go up against Rage M Dag Gamers thirty six plus or Prophet oh. SKG Orange, depending on who wins that series. Oh, that uh, so that's going to cool. be losers round four, and that's the one we're going to do next here. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, by the way, yeah. since we are talking about what's coming up next, so tell me, uh, what do these teams win when, you know, who, what, what, does the, what does the winner get uh, after this, this gruesome tournament? Um, obviously, there's going to be a prize pool. Uh, it's currently made up of the Maturino prize pool that we have going on, which you can donate to. You can also do some quests for free. It doesn't actually have to be uh, a donation per se. Uh, and the top three teams, at least, get the full access to the pro version of Insights.gg, which they can Ooh. use to you know, further analyze and improve their gameplay. Wow, that is great. And speaking of analyzing, we have a guest here who will help us analyze it, and it is Ex Oblivionist Psycho. Psycho, your Hello. name is well picked, my friend, because that was crazy. Great thank Doofus you. play, my friend. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> so, so uh, tell me, you know, uh, Niriki coming coming in as a bit of an uh, uh, as a surprise underdog who has been fighting some very, very, very good games. What were your thoughts going into this match? Yeah, I mean, we definitely didn't expect them to beat Clockwork in the beginning, so and actually make it to <laughs> where they are right now in the semi-final. So, uh, I don't know, I was just surprised, and we respected them for that reason, and yeah. All right, all right. So, did you know what kind of strats they were going to go, and did you adapt to that, or did you just play whatever and see what stuck? Well, we we stuck to, our, to what we're good at, to the meta comp, and yeah, I mean, we did, I, I did know that they're going to play fair on certain maps, but mm -hmm. that's about it. Okay, okay, and then just choosing to basically ignore that and just go with uh, yeah, exactly. With what you're good at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, very interesting strat you had on the last uh, on that last point, taking the sombra and just uh, just uh, you know forcing them out of that bunker combination. Yeah. That was uh, that was very well uh, very well done. Yeah, uh, we expected them to play the bastion stuff there as well, since okay. we full helped them on second. Okay, uh, you got any questions uh, for our guest here, Man of Flask? No, no, not really. I mean, I, I think it was was very clear that uh, I mean, you did, you know, you, like you said, you did respect them, but it was clear that you won it. I mean, it was a three zero. Uh, there were some close moments here and there, but it did look like you had things handled after the control map. So, yeah, it's uh, uh, they they got far, but not far enough just yet. Um, <laughs> do you do you think you might be seeing them back again in the grand finals if you get there? Um, I I actually haven't looked at the losers bracket, but I could definitely imagine them. Being back in the finals. Okay. So well, uh, next maybe up, maybe there'll be a matchup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for about you. that. Yeah. Next up for you is at Astra Paris Um, yes. how are you going to go past those guys? Well, like we always do, we'll stick to what we're good at and we'll roll them. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that is it. That is are the words of a very confident <laughs> man, and I can tell you that the yeah. chat is fully behind you my friend so you oh. go and enjoy and uh, uh you know go do what you're being good at which yes. is one hell of a dps player thank you so much thank for you, this interview you. um we are going to go on a bit of a break man of class when is the next yeah. game going on a little bit of them and uh, that will depend on when the team's ready we're just going to be back as soon as possible guys that's just how we do things going to be back with the next game that's going to be in the bracket game number 25 so that should be the loser of this game, which was uh, Nuriki versus, uh, let me see, that will, yeah, again, either be Nocturnal Aspect of Indignation, so we have to wait until that game is done, uh, then give the teams a little bit of a break, and then we'll see them play, uh, play out that game. Wow, yeah, I can't wait for more fireworks. Uh, <laughs> Definitely. That is <laughs> that is how it uh, however it for me uh some of my uh, favorite colleagues will be taking over for the second leg of this production um and you know i can't wait to see how they entertain you how they talk you through this um you guys 
Stick around. We'll be having a bit of a break and we will be back with the next fight in the, lo in the loser's bracket in just a few minutes. Thank you so much for everything and see you soon. This tournament was sponsored by Insights, a platform for gamers to learn and teach at the comfort of their own PC. Get your account today.